the other night. Somebody didn't like me. So a fight ensued? A fight ensued, yeah. No, then it turned out he had all these friends. And so this was just a little, this, my back got hurt mostly. And stuff like that. I lost. But not to forget, I have many friends. Among the Israelis, among the, uh, he, uh, among the Jews, he, he, even here in America, and I am proud of it. Jail was the first place when I can go, and they just went, well, as soon as I got there, they went, there he goes. He goes, who? And he goes, there's the rich nigger. I was like, oh, sh he said nigger. He said nigger. And everybody was looking at me like, so? And I was like, oh, my God, this is where I'm going to be staying? Hello, I'm Tabitha Soren. In this hour, we talk with three people some might consider to be, among other things, terminally politically incorrect. Bad boys, if you will, who have something to say. Whether you like what they say is up to you. We begin with the man whose music is as controversial as he is. It would seem that his middle name is Trouble, but in fact, he was never arrested until he got famous. Tupac Shakur, who just turned 24 years old, has grown up in front of our eyes, making him seem like the king of contradiction. One moment, Shakur is rapping about empowering women, and the next, being thrown in jail for sexually abusing a 19-year-old woman. He has spent the last eight months in a maximum security prison. Now he's out on appeal, and in this, his first extensive TV interview, we meet the many sides of Tupac Shakur. They call this place Weirdo Beach. I don't know, it ain't that weird to me. Oh, yeah. All right, give me a characterization of your childhood. I was the total opposite of what I am right now. I was quiet, withdrawn, I read a lot, I wrote poetry. At what point in your early life were you introduced to this quote-unquote thug mentality? When I was out there by myself, with nowhere to stay and no money. Which city? Bits of it was in Baltimore. Pieces of it was in uh, Marin City. And then the rest came in Oakland. And what was your first introduction? Drug dealers, uh, pimps, prostitutes. That's really it. Criminals. They just, they the only people that cared about me at that point. When I had nowhere to go, and I was hungry. But you said your mother hungry. always cared about you. She did, but she was lost at that particular moment. She wasn't caring about herself at that moment. And what was that like to have a mother who was addicted to crack? I love my mom. She the bond to me, so I, I know love she all is now, mistakes. but what about then? It was hard. It was hard because, you know, she was my hero. And what did you do when you stopped going to school? I only had two jobs ever in my life. One was in Round Table Pizza. I used to make the pizza, but it was good. It was the perfect job, Tabitha, because I was hungry and I got to like eat all the toppings off people's pizza. That's why, I, hey, because that the, all, everything is right there. Could you imagine I was making pizzas on the side, <laughs> <laughs> bringing pizzas home? I'm calling in my own deliveries. Hello. I'm saying this. We on Venice Beach. That's what you're supposed to do. I've been in jail for 11 months, Tabitha. You got to let me get a look or something. <laughs> Do you think it's important to tell your fans that it's not cool to end up in jail? I don't have any problem telling people it's not cool to go to jail, because I've been there. Tupac was a ghetto kid, first in New York, then Baltimore, then Marin City, California. The hip-hop scene in Northern California was big, and so when Tupac auditioned for Digital Underground, he was hired as a roadie and a dancer. Later, in 1991, he cut his first solo album, Tupacalypse Now, the one with the anti-police lyrics that sent Dan Quayle up the wall. As an actor, Shakur has appeared in three movies, Above the Rim, Poetic Justice, and Juice, his first and favorite. That's what it's all about. See how scared you are? Don't you get tired of this What the do you want from me? Nothing. I just want um, the chance to make right from all the bad things that I got. 1994 saw Tupac in and out of court, and in and out again. He was found guilty of sexual abuse and sent to jail for up to four and a half years. Right now, he is out on bail pending his appeal. Since his release, he's rarely left the studio, where he's recording tracks for his upcoming double album. Please, you got to keep your head up. Hey, don't film this, though, man. It's private, man. 
So just tell me how you've been feeling with all the stuff that's been going on the last couple of weeks. Good, relieved, um, happy to be home. It's a trip when you, when you know that last week you were in jail and I was in this little cell and it was real dirty and I didn't have any hot water and dudes were telling me when to shower and when to eat and all of that. And then the next, the next week I'm up at Monty's with uh, champagne and filet mignon and lobster and did, shrimps. Did you ever feel like your life was threatened in jail? By the guards, not by the inmates. They just did everything they could do to try to break me because I used to talk a lot of you know, coming out of jail. No, I know. not you. I know, I know. It's hard to believe, Tabitha, but you just got to picture it. But, um, you know, they would say things, because they would call you. I, jail was the first place, and I can go, and they just went. Well, as soon as I got there, they went, there he goes. And he goes, who? And he goes, there's the rich nigga. I was like, oh, sh He said, nigga. He said, nigga. And everybody was looking at me like, so? And I was like, oh, my God. This is where I'm going to be staying? <laughs> he just said, nigga. Well, you've got niggas in one of your records. Niggas. Guz. He He's talking about niggers. Niggers was the ones on the rope hanging out the thing. Niggers <laughs> is the ones with gold ropes hanging out at clubs. Well, maybe not everyone's aware of the differentiation. They don't have to be. Everyone, if you're not a nigger and you don't use you that word, don't you don't have to understand. Word. It's just not one of those things. How did you meet the girl involved in the alleged rape? I met her in a club. Some guys introduced me to her. Sorry. <laughs> I met her in a club. Some guys introduced me to her. And she was very forward with you? Extremely. And what happened? She did some things. And Sexual we things? We got together, yeah. She did some things there at the club, and we got together later that night. I saw her again another time with these guys that introduced me to her. Um, everybody was having a good time. Not didn't do anything sexual, they just was having a good time. I went and lit, me and her went in there, she gave a massage, came out, went to sleep, woke up, she's screaming rape, rape, I raped her, and the next thing I know, I'm going to jail. So in your opinion, there was no truth to the sexual abuse charges? Not on my part at all. If you could go back to the night when the sexual abuse occurred, is there anything that you would do differently? Yeah. What? I would not have um, closed my eyes until she was out of the room, until everybody was out of the room. I've grown up with tons of wild stories from lots of legendary rock bands and things that they did with their groupies. Do you feel like there's a double standard for black artists and white artists and how they entertain their groupies? Yes, it is a double standard because it, America's scared of a black man's sexuality. And they only see us as brutes who can only go, hammer girl. They just can't imagine us being any other way. And that's why it was so easy for people to believe that I could do this. It seemed like there was a time, though, that you were definitely reveling in the image of sort of being wild and crazy. And what got you off that path? Five hot bullets. Well, tell me what happened at the recording studios in Times Square. I got shot five times. I walked in. Some dudes walked in and shot me up. Um, took some jewelry. Do you know who shot you? No. Is that a no or is that a maybe? No, I don't know no. who shot me. So does that mean that you also have no idea why they shot you? No, I have no idea why they shot me. Do you think that they shot you just to get your jewelry? I don't know. It's like anybody's guess, I don't know. I don't really like to talk about it. At any point did you think that you were going to die after being shot five times? No. No, I didn't. Immediately I was like, God, oh, man, I know how it's going to be. When I die, it's gonna be no, no noise. You're gonna hear people screaming. I'm a fade out. You were on trial for sex abuse charges at the time of the shooting. I was on trial for rape and sodomy and guns possessions and forcible kidnapping, 50 about 18 charges. That's why I wanted to die at that point. Cause I was like, you know, I mean, I'm tired. But I lived and I was like, well, you know, I can't check out. So you felt suicidal? Oh, definitely. It wasn't like I was one day waking up wanting to commit suicide. Just all around felt suicidal. But I couldn't kill myself. I just wanted somebody to kill me for me. You know what I mean? Um, Yet you were still happy you survived the five gunshot wounds. The only reason I was happy was because I didn't want them to take me out. You know, I want honor, man. I don't want suckers that want to rob you, taking you out. You know what I mean? That's cowardly. Do you feel rehabilitated? That's what they try to do in jail. No, jail is not a rehabilitation thing. I feel like I've grown and matured. I don't think jail had anything to do with it, though. Tell me what you've been recording in the studio since you got out of jail. 
Okay. Euthanasia is the name of the album. It's a double album. I'm gonna release it for Christmas. It's gonna have Snoop on it. Me and him did a song called Two of America's Most Wanted. Fit that Apropos. one. Apropos. Yes. Here's some of that new album. Hear how Tupac thinks he's changed as a person since jail and how he'd like his fans to see him now when the MTV interview continues.